check. Let me know if you can hear my voice. <coughs> All right. Hello, hello everybody. Thanks for joining. It's been like about three months since I last hosted a tutorial live stream. Uh, that's because I was hospitalized by breaking my leg. I broke my leg because I fall off from the bike. So that's why I've been <coughs> in hospital for three months. And I do still need a rehabilitation, but I'm, I just been, I just left the hospital like two days ago. So now I'm a <coughs> should be uh, fine doing those tutorials live six and all those stuff again. <coughs> yep, I am ready to do stuff just that I bet just as I was doing <coughs> like three months ago. Okay, <coughs> so that's the reason why I was absent. I am so sorry for that. <coughs> Now, let's just start uh, today's tutorial, this, these tutorials, and hopefully I'll be able to continue doing this again from this week. And I have also learned a little bit of Blender while I'm in the hospital for a few days. So <coughs> I am thinking to post some especially about the geometry nodes of Blender maybe someday since it's much easier than Houdini uh, I think a lot of people will understand more of this stuff and you could easily create a pretty images because of its easy to use shaders okay so that's that for that that's for the future plan and today I am going to show you <coughs> how to create this kind of um, ring mesh or ring weaving mesh it, uh, it has all those star shaped rings connected weaved together to create this whole shape and it has been created from the input geometry like sphere or you could also input like a rabbit toy or pig head if you do that you could create a ring male like pattern to those input geometries like this okay so i'm gonna show you the logic and how you can implement this in Houdini. Okay. I'm also happy to see you guys all. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. Yep. I am totally fine now. I still have a little bit of difficulties working. So I do need uh, crutches to walk around, but totally fine. All right. So. Let me first show you the logic, how you could create this kind of uh, ring, like a uh, ring weaving shape. <coughs> I'm gonna show you step by step with the sketch first, I guess. The first thing you need to provide is the dual mesh, which you could easily provide, you could easily create by using a divide node in Houdini from a triangular mesh. So if you provide a triangular mesh and you use divide node, you could easily create a dual mesh like these. And when you create a dual mesh, you'll have a bunch of hexagon-like shape or uh, <coughs> octagon or all those um, polygons which has different number of edges. That's not a big problem with this uh, setup. After you have this. Uh, dual mesh. What you want to do next is to scale up these dual mesh for each meshes for each faces a little bit. 
so that you'll have uh, some intersections in the middle <coughs> okay so this is this is where you get these weaving pattern on the center <coughs> okay uh, but when you have a uh, intersections like these you kind of have a problem creating weaving because a lot of edges will touch together so <coughs> the best the best setup to make it a weaving or a weaving for this ring for those uh, dual meshes to have the inner shape right here inner shape which is uh, which I'm talking about here to be triangle as much as possible so if this inner shape becomes triangle you will have a nicely um, nicely done <coughs> ring weaving shape so in order to make this kind of a triangle shape why you what, why you can do as one of the option and one of the easiest way is to rotate each polygons in clockwise or counterclockwise by the way <coughs> with the same ratio now in order to rotate these <coughs> mm. ah. you cannot okay seems like the voice is a bit too low let's see let me see let me see if i can increase it how's this maybe that's too loud Can you hear my voice? <coughs> How's this? Higher? This is pretty high. Okay, how's this? Can you hear? Does it sound... Yes, okay, a little bit more. All right, let's see. All right, so everybody seems good now. Okay, let me know if it's too loud again, okay? <clears throat> okay, so where was I? So in order to create a triangular uh, shape on the middle intersections for these dual mesh what you can do is to rotate each mesh with the same ratio what I mean by the same ratio is that let's see you can pick one of the edge from one of the polygon <clears throat> mm. still low seems like uh, Oliver has some problem with the volume but everybody else seems good let's see the microphone has some direction so when I like moving my face to the side maybe the voice becomes a bit lower I'm right now talking to the microphone directly so maybe that's fine if I move my face to the side maybe it's a bit low well I can gain it a little bit more if you want a little bit this how's this okay well I do I I'm hearing my voice from my headphone as well and um, <clears throat> I do hear some white noise so probably this is a maximum that I can go
Hopefully that's good for you guys. Maybe or I can just make the microphone a bit closer. Like this. Hmm. How's this? So, um, where was I? So, the uh, first thing I want to do is to pick the edge and um, decide the ratio like uh, picking the ratio from 0 to 1 from the starting point of the edge to the end point of the edge now if you pick 0.5 then you get the middle point of the edge if you get 2 point, uh, 0.25 then you get a 25% positions off the edge somewhere around here and once you do that you do the same things for all the other edges and then connect them and that will be the rotated polygon and you do the same things for all the other polygons just like it you just like you did for the first one okay I think I made a mistake should be here like that and continue doing that using uh, the same ratio to the other polygons and at some point by choosing the right ratio and the right scaling of this polygon some uh, at some point you'll be able to get this triangle shape and as an intersections and that's when you get the perfect ring weaving shape so that's what we're going to create today and once you be able to create this shape then all the other all the rest of the stuff is pretty easy to <coughs> um, create it's just about offsettings and setting the thickness and so on yes i am very fine thank you thank you for asking Daijo over this Okay, so let's do that from scratch. Let me bring this one on top so that I can use it as a cheat sheet. All right, so <clears throat> let's do it from a simple geometry like sphere so that it's easy to follow or easy to see the uh, results. Okay, now, <coughs> uh, where was I? So first thing first, let's increase the number of meshes. Right now I have a bunch of triangles, but maybe I can increase the frequency to around four, three or four. Okay, let's go with the four. Now, <coughs> as I said, uh, first thing you would like to get is the dual mesh. Out of these triangle meshes so you, what you can do is to use the divide node connect it and turn on this compute dual <coughs> then you'll be able to get these dual meshes uh, dual face dual mesh uh, geometry now next thing you want to do is to separate each faces like hexagon or forgot how to say these um, five sides mesh and all the other um, polygons now if you create a dual mesh from sphere I think you only you only get two types of um, polygons either you have six size or five size but when you try to create a dual mesh from really complex geometry like from a pig head or rubber toy you I think you'll getting a tons of polygons tons of types of polygons like um, which has from four to seven or eight sides so you gotta consider that as well now uh, first thing that I want to do is to separate those faces 
uh, these points are being connected to each other right now so let's separate these first of all so I'm going to use the point split node to unfuse the points all the points so that every face has been uh, isolated like this and you can see that from the normal okay now next thing I would like to do is to <coughs> sort each points based on the vertices numbers or vertices orders so that it will be easy to uh, recreate the polygons by rotating the geometry <coughs> the current primitive, uh, primitive or current polygon so to do that I'll just gonna use a sort node for each point based on the y vertex order so that I am assured that each point is ordered clockwise I think from somewhere around here to goes like this if you don't do that there is a chance that point order is like 0 1 2 3 or something really mixed up but by doing this you'll be able to reorder the point order based on this polygon uh, vertices and by doing that you'll be easily you'll be able to recreate the polygon easily just by following the point order on the polygon okay so once I do that it's time to create the first vex okay as always I am fan of using vex script you might notice that okay first thing I would like to do is to create a flat ring shape just as I did sketch right here so first thing to do is to scale the polygon then do the rotation like this by picking up the edge point point on the edge by using some ratio value okay I can do it um, <coughs> first from scale or starting from rotation doesn't really matter which goes first or which goes later so let's see maybe I can do the rotation first or maybe well let's just do the scaling because that's much easier okay so and probably I don't really need to scale down the shape but all, I think most of the time I want to scale up each of the faces so let's create a parameter for the scaling first as a float value which should be more than one so I'm going to open up the edit parameter interface to set the range of this scale from 1 to 2 all right <clears throat> now it's time to scale these um, polygons you know in order to do that um, I need to I think I need to modify the point position of these polygons so first thing to do is to access point the primitive point lists by using the prim points that's just like this and access to each point by creating the loop get the point position all right now <clears throat> To scale up you do need to define the center of the scaling in this case I think I can just use the the centroid of the primitive which is P so <clears throat> let's just use this and 
in order to scale each point positions let's say I am going to name the new scaled position as new pos is equal to <coughs> uh, first of all the current point position minus at p and I'm gonna multiply it by scaling and you also need to add the centroid point position again so this will become the vector value which is from the center point to each point position now by multiplying by scale you can increase the distance now this is just a the vector value which defines the direction and the distance now in order to set uh, create it as a positions you do need to uh, add the current centroid positions to that to the distance so first of all you place the center point position then add the distance vector value then you'll be able to scale up the current point position okay let's check that out you can re-modify the point position by using the set point attrib p at pt with this new position okay now let's increase the value and see what happens okay think it's working now this is where you have these uh, intersections and now the intersection shape is sim uh, close to a hexagon which is which could be a problematic when you create a ring shape okay <clears throat> so that's why you want to fix it by uh, rotating each uh, primitive with the same ratio okay so let's do that so to do that uh, next thing you want to do is to access to <clears throat> the edge point position maybe let's get back to the scale one so access to each point position of the edge maybe you can just pick one edge then pick the ratio from 0 to 1 if it's point 2 maybe if, if the starting point is here and the end point is here then the point position for the point 2 is somewhere around here and you do the same thing for all the other edges and connect them connect those positions to make make it look like the polygon has been rotated with the same ratio so <clears throat> let's do that and to do that i can do after the scale or the before scaling maybe let's do it before scaling so first we rotate the shape then scale it up using this so I'm gonna create a space somewhere around here <clears throat> okay now mm, let me see let me see so I'm going to disable this scaling uh, for now I'm gonna make this back <laughs> sometime later okay now well what we need to get is the first point position of the edge and second point position of the edge for each uh, loop now the number of points is equal to the number of edge of the polygon so you can just use the same loop i'm gonna say so let's say let, let's call this first point as a pt1 and let's also get the next point position as pt2 which is always i plus one and you can just say i plus one because we have reordered the point right here if you haven't reordered the point based on the vertices this might not work okay like that so now you have two point numbers one of one for the first point of the edge one for the second point of the edge okay now let's get the point position for these two positions J 
just like that. <coughs> okay, now you have two positions. You'll be able to use the ratio value to define the position between point 0.1 to point 0.2. So let's create this ratio value as a parameter from 0 to 1, something like this. So let's say I'm going to choose 0.25. <clears throat> Hello, thank you for the comments and thank you for um, caring of my health. I'm all right now. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, in order to get the po uh, pos position point position between those two points, I am going to use the lerp function. So let's call this position M in terms of the stands for the position middle then use the lerp between the point position one and position two using the ratio as the the lerp value <clears throat> so if it's 0.5 then it's the middle positions so if it's 0.25 somewhere around here between this point to this point okay now that i have point position i can use this or i can make this as a, a new position for a first point so let's do that by using set point attrib 0 p at pt1 with this position m see what happens okay and if i change the ratio you can see that the polygon is rotating with the same ratio all right looks good now we can also implement the scaling to this rotation just uh, which we have right here so let's bring this set point attribute to the last and then we're going to create the new position by scaling this position m so currently this is the position that we want to scale so let's rename this to position m and i think that's all we need to do and then we need to rename this to new position if i scale this up all right now it works you can see that some point uh, the balance between the scale and the ratio at some point you'll be able to get this triangle shape as intersection shape okay so that's where we want to uh, stop and create a weaving pattern next okay that looks good all right so at this point i am going i'm gonna leave this vex uh, wrangle node for now and then Next thing I would like to do is to create a curve uh, from this shapes. That's easy. You can just use a convert line. Now you have a bunch of lines. Okay, so next thing I would like to do is to uh, make these uh, lines um, become like a wave curve for each edges and I'm gonna use a trigonometry for that and I found out that using using the uh, cosine function for each edge works, be works best so if you use the cosine function which is in between 0 to 360 degrees what you get as a curve is something like this okay so this is 0 this is 1 this is minus 1 so by and this is where the angle is 0 and this is where the angle is 360 degrees okay so by having this <coughs> angle from 0 to 360 you'll be able to get a curve like this and what I would like to do is to apply this curve for each edges like let me 
draw this with a different color so like that like that like that like that like that like that okay well this is in 2d so it's a bit hard to see but um, <clears throat> you can see that the edge is connected with this part where the the length is always equal to one <clears throat> so you are assured that each edges are connected even if you have a create a wave pattern like these okay so that's what i'm going to create and easy as enough and the direction where we're going to create the wave is probably using a normal uh, direction from the original mesh so going back to the mesh you will be you should be able to get the normal direction if you don't can just recreate it using the normal with the point option on okay so I'm gonna use these as a guide where these wave should uh, offset it to okay <clears throat> thank you for uh, considering my else really really appreciate it all right so what was I so in order to make these uh, lines wavy, you do need a bunch of points. Right now, each edge has only two points because it's just a line. So let's resample these to create a bunch of points. So I am going to enable, uh, for first of all, uncheck maximum segment length and Instead, I'm going to check this maximum segments number, which you can define how many points you get for a per edge. Let's say I would like to have 16 edges or 16 points per edge. Okay, that looks enough to get a smooth curve. Now it's time to move each point as a wavy curve based on the cosine uh, curve. I'm gonna use um, I guess I do need to define the angle based on the position of the point on top of the curve because we have to apply an angle for each point the first point on the edge should be 0 degree and the last point angle should be 360 degrees and the middle one it should be 180, 180 degrees so on so in order to get, in order to remap those point position to those angles, what we can do is to go back to the resample node. We can use this curve view attribute, turn it on. Uh, what you get out of this curve view is the value in between zero to one for each curve uh, as a point um, value, point attribute. So if you look at the geometry spreadsheet for each point you see that you get the curve view from 0 to 1 for each edges and now that you have those value you can just use this to create an angle value for the cosine okay so because of that I can just use the point wrangle to access each of the point because I already have these value curve view value for the angles and I also would like to refer to the normal direction of the original mesh so I'm going to connect this original mesh with the normal direction connected to the second input I'm going to name this offset or wave offset okay so let's see First of all, let's create an angle from the curve view. So float angle is equal to, I'm going to use the fit 0, 1, which will uh, remap the value in between 0 to 1 to something you want. <coughs> the value that I want to remap is curve view. And the value that I want to remap to is 
from 0 to 360 degrees or you can just say pi multiplied by 2 it's the same thing but in radians all right okay everybody thank you for all the comments and now that i have these angles i can use the cosine uh, function to get the height of the wave and maybe you can also multiply it with your own height, height value to control the, uh, the value uh, to control the height the offset maybe the radius of this sphere is equal to one so maybe zero to one is a bit too much so i'm gonna reduce the height value to from 0 to 0 0.05 okay let's see so as a, as a result what you get out of this uh, cosine function multiplied by height if the oops what did i do is that the maximum value is always the height value and the minimum is the negative value negative 0 0.0106 okay because the cosine is in between min negative 1 to positive 1 and you just multiply with the height okay now next thing you want to get is the direction where the point should go okay and to, to get that you want to sample from the original mesh to do that I am going to use the function called UV sample so UV sample from the second input I would like to get the normal direction and uh, as a instead of UV I'm going to use the point position to sample the value and the current point position is at P okay now I should be able to get the normal sample <coughs> normal direction from the second input it's time to move the point position based on this normal multiplied by this height okay you can see that something has happened the curve has been offset it based on this cosine function okay a bit hard to see with the curve so let's try to make this thickening by creating a tube like shape so first thing first everything I in order to make a smooth curve I'm going to fuse this first of all and then <clears throat> probably it's a good idea to make each ring as a single primitive so I'm going to use the polypass Okay, now before it was around 960 primitive and after polypass you have 162 primitive which is the number of connected rings all right now you can apply some smooth node to smoothen out the shape a little bit like these okay looks good now finally <coughs> I can try to create a poly wire shape. Okay, now currently the thickness is too a bit too high, so I think the thickness of this um, wire, I mean thickness of this ring, is related to this offset value that I have set here. So I'm gonna copy this parameter here and then bring this to the y radius there you go now let's increase the number of divisions to make it a bit more smoother maybe equal to 10 yeah starting to get nice okay now in, in this moment i would like to make this shaded a little bit to easily shade like a metal one of the 
uh, things that I do all recently is to use the matcap shader as a preview so let's say I have downloaded this matcap image from the Google image something like this if you search with the matcap you see a bunch of images like these so let's say I'm going to download it this and in order to use that as a matcap shader you can go you can type D on the display you open up the display options and go to the material and there you can see the matcap texture right here you can change this to the one that I have downloaded let's see it should be in this reference right and in order to see it as a matcap shader you can go to the perspective shading and there you go I think this is available from Houdini 19 by enabling it you can easily shade it with this matcap shader and it's just a fake metal but looks nice I mean in as for testing yeah <clears throat> okay so this looks really promising and let's try to change those parameters that i have set and see what kind of shape that i get okay if i change the scale you can see that at some point there are some gaps between the rings or <clears throat> where the highest um, wave there are some gaps uh, right here that is because if you go back here you have a little bit of gaps here so it's not a perfect triangle anymore but as a shape maybe some people would <coughs> appreciate this more so make this parameterized I think it does make sense to have a bunch of different shapes so I'm gonna key I'm gonna left this out I'm not going to make this perfect so that you can find out what shape you'd like best with those all those different parameters okay so it seems to work fine now let's try to uh, try this with other geometry it's almost done uh, like pig head now it's a, a bit too big let's scale this down so that it's sim similar to the sphere somewhere around here and let's also remesh this a uh, bunch of triangles okay let's make this a bit more triangles maybe that's too much okay looks good let's also smoothen out by raising up the iteration so that you have a little bit uh, each of the triangle becomes a little bit closer in terms of size okay looks nice now let's give a switch node so that you can switch between the geometry let's see how it goes switch this to a pig head and see the result there you go now this is a more irregular because the each triangle shape it does have a different uh, size so you, as a result you get a different more skewed ring uh, shape but most of the time it works maybe it has some problem with these high curvature positions you might need you want to tweak this to see what's work best for this geometry and maybe there are some more nicer algorithm uh, algorithm better than this but this is the uh, 
this is the easiest that I could think of for now. So that's that. <clears throat> but overall looks nice. Yep. And that's pretty much uh, what I make, uh, what I wanted to make for today. Okay, now in order to make this um, rendered a little bit more prettier, let's disable the matte cap shader and oops, this is, I don't really like this color. Let's for this pick head, let's delete the attribute or the material. Maybe also a UV. All right. Now I'm going to make it look like a metal. <clears throat> I'm probably making each um, rings with a little bit of different colors might be uh, makes it a bit little bit prettier so <clears throat> first of all I'm going to create some principal shader just drag and drop to this geometry and the base color I can make this white or a little bit gray gray and then Let's make this metallic and in order to get the reflection you do need to get you do need to set a, um, <clears throat> a background or environment so I'm gonna click this environment light and set the environment map with the HDRI image okay this is the one that I've downloaded from the SIBL free website. You can search with the SIBL free. <clears throat> thank you, Oliver. Thank you for, thank you, KMA3D for the super chat. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Okay, now I have these uh, background image or background HDRI image. I'm going to hide this background so that I can only see the geometry okay looks nice and let's tweak the material a little bit more like decreasing the roughness okay that's I think that's pretty fine now <clears throat> let's also apply some color to each primitive and I am going to finish this okay so to apply a color for each primitive, I can do it right after I have created the ring. I have created the ring as one piece, maybe somewhere around here, polypass, or after smooth. Okay, so I'm going to create a primitive wrangle <coughs> in this color create some color attribute from using the random function maybe based on the primitive number all right and then you can set the color oops for each primitive using the ram from attribute the color then maybe from orange to white okay seems like the material will only accept point colors so I'm going to use the attribute promote to promote the primitive attribute to point so primitive to point I'm going to promote the color attribute going back to the color I'm gonna set it as color value okay I think I'm missing hmm 
Let me check the geometry spreadsheet if I have color at value. Okay, I do have. And if I go back to the color node, yeah, I do have color at applied. Okay. Then finally, fully wire with the colored metal piece. Okay. Nice. And that's pretty much it for what I wanted to show you today. <clears throat> okay, so for this week, I think it was pretty simple to create or follow. Hopefully, I didn't do much vex today. Just this ring and just this wave. <clears throat> so. As always, I am going to upload this file to the GitHub and I am going to post a link to the description page of this YouTube video so that you can download the file after this uh, live has been added, ended. And yeah. And I am planning to continue this <clears throat> live stream at least until it gets to a number 100. Right now, today is like 83. So, <clears throat> hopefully, I'll be able to continue until 100. And also, I'm going to, I'm planning to start the new tutorials for Blender as well <clears throat> with the geometry nodes, which is much easier to deal because you don't do any scripting. You just, there's only node available for that. So, I am not allowed to use scripting for that. <clears throat> yeah. And I am also going to, I am also would like to cre create a, a bit more Vex series episode as well. I mean, most of the things there are, most of the things are being told, I think, but there are, I guess, a few topics being left out so <clears throat> I would like to do that as well yeah and hopefully you'll be able to come back again to watch uh, the series okay and well anyway thank you very much Thank you everybody for joining and thank you for all the warm comment. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> I'm really happy to hear everybody <clears throat> being really kind. And I'm really happy to come back uh, to have a chat with you guys. <clears throat> okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much and see you next time. Bye bye.